Hello, and welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. I want to, I'm very, in fact, this is one of my most exciting shows that I'm going to be showing all year, because I got two wonderful young men from the University of Illinois downstate, uh, uh, Champaign-Urbana, right? And uh, they both are with a wonderful, amazing organization called Stand With Us. And I like to read a little bit something about their organization, uh, Stand With Us and the Emerson Fellowship. And it's a one-year program that recruits, trains, educates, and inspires pro-Israel college student leaders on campuses throughout North America. They form a network of trained pro-Israel student leaders chosen from 80 campuses who inspire their peers and collaborate with other student groups to run effective educational events about Israel. They also counter divestment campaigns and anti-Israel rhetoric. Um, and I want to introduce you to our wonderful, wonderful guests. Our first one here on my left is Elon Carroll, who is the co-president, correct, of the Illinois Public Affairs Committee at the university. Yes. Am I correct on that? And on my right here is Aitan, 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 Troyansky. You have the hardest name here. <laughs> and you're the Midwest Campus Liaison at the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. Okay. And I want to welcome both my guests. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. welcome <laughs> to A10. Um, and your, your program has really ex inspired me to have this show today. And Stand With Us has been doing a lot of work on different campuses to uh, counteract uh, anti-Semitism. And we and, and I mentioned anti-Israel is the new anti-Semitism. I'll start with you, Elon. What does that mean, anti-Israel is the new anti-Semitism? Well, first of all, thank you for having us today. It's yeah. a great to be able to have this discussion about anti-Semitism and anti-Israel activity on college campuses. Both Eitan and I face this on a daily basis, and it's great that we're able to give a voice to it. Um, we see so often on our college campus that anti-Israel activities and language is crossing the line into anti-Semitism and criticism of the Jewish state turns into criticism of the Jewish people. And this takes a lot of forms. One form that we faced last semester on campus was something called the Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions Campaign, known as BDS, which is essentially an effort by students on campus to pull all of the university's connections to Israel, including financial connections to Israel. And we believe that such efforts on a campus are only efforts to isolate the Jewish community and to delegitimize the only Jewish country in the world that is the state of Israel. And fortunately, we were able to successfully defeat the BDS campaign on our campus last year at the University of Illinois. So that is one example of how anti-Israel activities are becoming anti-Semitism. Now, how, A10, maybe you can, so how did you defeat the anti-Semitism on campus? What was some of the things that you guys did? And I know you mentioned, what you mentioned earlier, as we were at the Bluegrass having a great lunch today, um, you were mentioning something about, you know, you did the Emerson Fellowship. Exactly, the Emerson Fellowship, explain that and how it works with anti-Semitism on campus. Right, so the Stand With Us Emerson Fellowship, like you mentioned, it's a one-year fellowship for uh, pro-Israel college students. Um, they fly out to a conference in August in Los Angeles. I just came back from the conference because now I'm uh, the campus, the Midwest campus liaison, mm -hmm. which means that my job is to mentor the Stand With Us Emerson Fellows uh, in the region and help them with all of their programs, help them with strategy, um, and work as sort of an intermediary between Stand With Us full-time staff and all the Emerson Fellows. What, what, what has been going on at your university uh, as far as anti-Semitism? Maybe you could describe something that's been going on. I know we, we just went through um, Charlottesville uh, just within a week ago, and, um, this, and uh, maybe you could describe you know, 
I mean, are people marching there? I mean, are you getting neo-Nazis? Are you getting uh, other groups that are, what, what exactly is going on at your university? And this is very common, not, when we talk about University of Illinois, this is also happening at uh, Northwestern University here. It's also happening at uh, University of Chicago. It's happening all around every, I, I have so many, I must have had 50 different colleges that's going on. And, I, and, I, and another reason I, I'll have you answer the question just one second, is that a lot of us, not only do we have children starting at universities, but a lot of us are having our grandchildren, and that's why I want this to educate our viewers, because a lot of our grandchildren are starting at the university, and I'm thinking, oh my God, what are they going to, you know, what's going to happen if they come across any anti-Semitism and they're involved in it? Are they going to get bullied? What's going to happen? So I'm going to have both of you describe uh, what's going on as far as what you've seen at University of Illinois downstate. Great. And other campuses. Well, great, chime in on great question. Um, we see anti-Semitism and anti-Israel activity manifest in a lot of forms on our campus. A lot of them can be, as we mentioned, the BDS boycott movement um, is one of the forms. We have a lot of anti-Israel um, speakers who come to campus and even professors on college campuses who profess very anti-Israel views. We have marches, protests, rallies against Israel. We've seen Israeli flags covered with blood and covered with, uh, sorry, with fake blood and burns and all kinds of demonstrations against the Jewish community. Um, so you brought up Charlottesville. I mean, some of the things they were chanting in Charlottesville that the neo-Nazis were saying, things like the Jews will not replace us and the Zionists will not control our country. These are things that we are, on, we are familiar with at our own university and things that have been chalked on our quad and have been repeated at rallies. And um, even though the American public was super shocked by it uh, and what happened in Charlottesville, to us, it's, it's almost normal, which is really sad. Yeah, and no one's speaking out against it. I mean, I thank God there's a stand with us, but you know, here we have we hear about what happened in Charlottesville. Uh, it was supposed to be because of the um, the statue of Robert E. Lee, and as you said, that was just a kind of a front. They actually were there to, uh, you know, make uh, fun and uh, bully uh, Jewish people as well as uh, black people and other uh, minor minorities. Um, that was just sort of an in that they got in. But this happens all the time, and no one is speaking out for, I mean, you're, you guys are our children and our grandchildren, and no one's speaking out for them. And uh, Eitan, what is your, what, is, what has been your, uh, uh, that you've seen on campus? Right, so like you mentioned, um, with, in Charlottesville, the Confederate statues being a front, um, for then protesting and being very racist and being very discriminatory. It's the same way with anti-Israel rhetor rhetoric on campus. Um, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is often used um, and manipulated really to be kind of used as a front for actual anti-Semitism, for demonizing the Jewish state of Israel, claiming it doesn't have the right to exist. Um, and that's where you're crossing the line from legitimate criticism of Israel, you know, criticism of policies uh, or of governmental, you know, anything policy or law to saying the whole state of Israel is bad, the state of Israel doesn't uh, have the right to exist, that's where you cross the line into demonizing, delegitimizing. And also calling them an apartheid nation. And I think you said earlier at lunch, you said to me, um, uh, it's a really, uh, you know, a, a terrible thing that, you know, because it would happen in South uh, Africa, South right. Africa. And it's really, you know, that was apartheid. There's a difference between an apartheid that was in uh, South Africa opposed to this, you know, in here in the United States. What, what right. is the difference? Well, and also by, uh, by accusing the whole Jewish state of Israel of apartheid, you're really diminishing, not you, but students who are using this rhetoric uh, are diminishing the actual experiences that actual people who suffered apartheid in South Africa experienced. You know, the African Americans who were the majority in South Africa and they were oppressed, they were discriminated against, they were kept from having their voices heard, um, that was true apartheid. And then by saying that Israel is committing apartheid, it's really diminishing the experiences of the actual historical mm -hmm. apart apartheid in South Africa. It's like people calling different things a holocaust, and you know, the real holocaust was what happened in, you know, in Germany and Poland 
And uh, so it's almost the same comparison when people right. think of, you know, Holocaust, apartheid, you know, they just throw these words around and it's really, and it diminishes what really happened. How do you, um, Elan, um, how do, you know, when you say, when you go with working with students, you know, and a student's getting bullied or, or a professor, uh, a professor at school is not, you know, says something in their classroom, oh, Israel is a, an apartheid nation, you know, and, and he's actually, say, a history professor. What do you do? How does this, how do you handle things like this? Yeah, so one of the things that we do at Alliant Public Affairs Committee is that we've been on the front lines of facing anti-Semitism, anti-Israel activities since our founding in 1984. And when students come to us, and it's very common, unfortunately, telling us that their professors are um, having them read anti-Israel books or read essays that criticize Israel or even write things that criticize Israel, we go to the administration and we go to our Jewish community leaders on campus, which we have really strong relationships with, and we're able to go through these channels and, and, and challenge these things and say, this is why it's unacceptable to have students do this and we should be offering a more balanced curriculum to students and even outside of the classroom, there are many experiences students have which feel, they feel like discriminate against them as Jewish people. And so it's our job as student leaders on campus, as pro-Israel student leaders who stand up for these students who maybe don't know how to stand up for themselves. So we offer us as a resource to them. Give me an example of how, either one of you, how you stand up for a student and say the student was bullied and, uh, you know, they, they were called a name, you know, um, or they said, you know, Jews should be burned in an oven or something like that. How do you, what do you say to them? How do they handle it? Should they ignore it? Should they talk back to it? What, what exactly should they do? So first, it's very important, um, without going into any specifics on any situations like this, it's very important to tell the student that they are in control of the situation. We don't want to pressure them to doing it, anything they don't want to do. Um, you know, if they don't want to put their name out into the press or be it, like public about what happened, we are not going to make them do that. Um, or if they don't want to take certain actions, we won't push them to take certain actions. Uh, the important thing is really being there for students, uh, especially the students who aren't necessarily as active in Jewish life and Israel uh, education on campus. They don't necessarily, they're not used to this rhetoric and they don't necessarily know how to react to it. Yeah, because they say they came from, um, you know, they came out of the northern suburbs of Chicago, and uh, they 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 had no idea. They've never heard anti-Semitism remarks. Uh, this is the first time they've heard something. And do they? I mean, what should, should they say? Something just on the spot. What should they do right on the spot? Well, my advice to any student who encounters anti-Semitism right on the spot is the first thing to do is remain calm and to not reply to them. Oftentimes these people are just agitators who are looking for the students to, to respond to them with even more anger and that would only fuel the fire. So we, we tell people be calm even though it's obviously a difficult situation and the next thing is look for help. So thank, thankfully we have a very strong Jewish community at the University of Illinois and most colleges across the country have Hillel's and Chabad's, which are able to help them, and uh, pro-Israel organizations, which can be resources to them. And we, we tell them, tell us about what happened, and then we can go to the right authorities to deal with the situation. Sometimes it could be going to the administration and saying, a student group was perpetuating this anti-Semitism. We need to have consequences for the student group. Sometimes it's individual students who we need to deal with. Um, through other means, sometimes we need to get law enforcement involved. Um, whatever it is, students should know that there's an entire community available to them to support them, and they're not alone, and even if it sometimes can feel very isolating, they should know that their experience isn't unique, and unfortunately, anti-Semitism is on the rise in our country like it hasn't been in a long time, and we see this really played out on college campuses with anti-Israel and anti-Semitism. What do you think, why do you think it's on the rise? Um, what what